Hello, I'm Phil Manson, and this is Morning Prayer. In recent years, archaeologists have unearthed the Philippi Agora, that is, a huge open space with public buildings lining the outer boundary of this marketplace. The Via Ignatia, the main east-west road, ran adjacent to this area, where Paul and his companions most likely were met by the slave girl with the fortune-telling spirit. They expelled the Pythia spirit, and then in Acts 16, 19, we're told, when her owners realized their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. I want you to notice something. The private or hidden motive for grabbing and dragging Paul and Silas to the authorities was because their hope of making money through the slave girl was gone. But the public or politically correct reason was, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. It was a bogus accusation to cover up the real reason. And besides that, the owners were the ones throwing the city in an uproar by dragging Paul and Silas to the authorities and rousing the crowd. Paul performed a gracious deed by freeing the young girl of an evil spirit. But as William Barclay says in his commentary, when Paul cured her of her madness, these men felt not joy at a fellow creature's restoration to health, but fury that their source of revenue was gone. See, the owner needed a more substantial, less self-centered accusation against Paul and Silas, and so they fabricated a charge that played upon the anti-Semitism of the proud, patriotic Roman mob. I don't think Paul and Silas started the day thinking they were going to be stripped and beaten and thrown in prison for doing good. But folks, don't expect the powers of darkness and evil to play fair or to exercise righteous judgment. Oh, if they had only known that Paul and Silas were also Roman citizens. But that's a story for another time. Jesus said, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. Let's pray together. So, Father, while the world might hate Jesus Christ, you so loved the word that you gave your one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Grant us the courage to carry on your mission, being faithful to what you have called us to do, considering that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. This is the month, Lord, that We give increased prayer and attention to our brothers and sisters in Christ who are imprisoned, who are persecuted for their faith, who are mistreated simply because they bear your name. May your joy be theirs in the midst of trial, fully convinced that they are blessed when people insult them, persecute them, and falsely say all kinds of evil against them. Because of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Well, thank you for tuning in to Morning Prayer this week. I I look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday at 10 a.m., either in-house or online. God bless you. Have a great weekend. (laughs) 